Mr. David Wilkie, who's the, or excuse me, Mr. Don Bowers, the owner and operator of Tapkins Convenience Plus in Anamosa. And uh, Anamosa sits along the Wapsipatinkin River, one of the nine major inland rivers that had epic flooding in Iowa, in addition to the Mississippi, uh, which is also in my district. Tapkins is a gasoline service station and groceries retailer and has been in operation since 2005. Prior to starting his company, Mr. Bowers served as chief executive officer of Go America in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And Mr. Bowers, the last time I was in Anamosa at the peak of the flooding along the Wapsie, I was in a boat riding over the wastewater treatment facility, which is located within eye distance of where your store is located. So we're very glad you took time from your busy schedule to come and share your story with us. Thank you, uh, Congressman Raley and committee members. I would like to thank you for the privilege of telling our story, which demonstrates to uh, small towns in Iowa that uh, Congress does care and the voices can be heard. I was asked to explain basically what happened and what our response was and what the SBA or Congress can do to help. The flooding began in Anamosa, uh, which is about 20 miles northeast of Cedar Rapids on Thursday, June 12th, and it became apparent uh, fairly quickly that the rains weren't going to let up, the levees weren't going to be high enough, uh, so there were about 100 volunteers assembled that day, raised the levee across the street from our store, uh, added sandbags alongside our store, sandbagged along the street that leaves the town, and also sandbagged uh, the uh, sewage treatment plant area. We left that night thinking our business had been secured and we slept pretty well, and we're surprised at what we saw in the morning. The night brought more rain on already saturated land and overflowing river banks. A five inch rain fell that night, which softened the uh, levees that were raised. Uh, by morning of the Friday the 13th, there was uh, two and a half feet of water surrounding our store. The Wapsi River Bank uh, basically destroyed the city sewage treatment plant. Over the next couple of days, my wife and I watched from a, about a half a block away. We could see the water recede from our store. And as we reserve, observed the damage the first day we got in the store, it's pretty shocking. It's basically, it would be like if you threw everything in a blender and it just got stirred up and the blender was shut off and everything just dropped where it fell amidst all the mud and muck. On Monday, four days after the flood, we were in the store with squeegees, uh, much as you mentioned, just pushing everything out of the store we could get out. Uh, inch or two of muddy water. It was key to get in there while you still had some water to work with, enabled it to be moved out easier. Uh, we moved things around because we made calls that day. We had, uh, we had uh, big dumpsters coming. We needed to be able to get into the store, so we kind of just moved things out of the road so we could maneuver. On Tuesday, day five, we had over 40 volunteers as we began to throw away over $60,000 worth of our store's inventory, which is basically everything in the store. We moved uh, refrigeration equipment outside and disassembled all the shelving, moved it out as well, and began power washing the floors, knocking holes in the walls so we could get air circulating. Uh, that's critical in preventing additional mold from developing. The following morning, we had uh, the electricity returned to the store with just the ceiling lights being able to be turned on so we could see what we were doing. Over the next few days, we began cutting the walls to a height of four feet, removing all the insulation and drywall, scrubbing and bleaching the studs. When you say scrubbing walls, it's not just scrubbing walls, it's scrubbing the studs uh, with, with brushes and, and sponges. We, moved all the, we took all the refrigeration equipment outside and hosed it with clear water uh, while it was still wet with mud. If you leave, let that dry on there, it's just no good. We did find later that by removing the refrigeration equipment, washing it down with clear water, uh, a few days later after air dried, we started up and most of the equipment worked. Uh, since then, we've had to replace a couple of timers on the, on the uh, defrosters. That's about it. And once we found it worked, then we'd clean and sanitize it. Uh, skipping to the end, after a long six weeks of grueling and off the back breaking work, my wife and I go home too tired to do anything but shower and fall into bed. I do believe what happened here could be replicated almost anywhere. Uh, we had a lot of volunteers, but every community, every business has people around them that come alongside them and can help. And the key is to get in quickly. Um, but I believe that, that can happen or can uh, help. Um, we basically are back in full operation. I have original mortgage. Uh, the second mortgage, if we get that through the SBA, is difficult. What needs to happen in our case is the merging of the two mortgages together. Uh, that's really kind of critical in our future su success. The business is up and running. We're running about 20% over what we did a year ago. Now we've got to figure out how to pay for it all. Um, 
To simply restate, we went through a natural disaster, came out stronger, we rebuilt without governmental help. We now need financial help on the backside. We save money in this process and are even closer to the community we serve. We're not seeking a handout or a bailout, just a lower interest rate to help a good business remain strong. Thank you.